Uh, good morning to everybody. Now in this class, in this session we will study about optics. This is unit number 6. The optics is the study of the light, the rectilinear, rectilinear propagation of light based on laws of reflection and laws of refraction. The optics is of two types. One is called as ray optics, just now I told you. The second one is the wave optics. The ray optics based on reflection and refraction, whereas wave optics is based on the phenomenon like diffraction, interference and polarization. In your syllabus, refraction, reflection, scattering, display, uh, dispersion, these are all included in ray optics. First, we will study about the ray optics, which is also called as the geometrical optics because it is based upon the rays of light, formation of images in various cases. So, let us begin with the phenomenon known as reflection. Let me explain here. I will take one highly polished surface, which is called as the plane mirror. It is represented by M, M dash. I will select one point on it. At that point, I will draw one normal, one perpendicular line. A ray of light is falling at that point O. This is represented by AO. This is called as the incident ray. It is making certain angle I with the normal. So this I is called as angle of incidence. From this plane surface, this light is getting reflected and this OB is the reflected ray and this OB makes some other angle with normal N. So, this type of phenomenon in which the light is reflected back, sent back from a surface into the same medium is called as the phenomenon of reflection. The reflection takes place when the light is falling on the highly polished surface, whether the surface is plane or curved, it does not matter. In both the cases, reflection occurs. The laws of reflection are the first one angle of incidence is equal to angle of reflection and the second law says that the incident ray, the reflected ray and the normal all are lying in the same plane, like in the same plane of the board. So, reflection follows these two laws, they are called as the laws of reflection. Now, some example we will see. In case of the spherical mirrors, how the reflection takes place, let me explain. Here I am taking one spherical mirror, which is the concave type. The center of the mirror is known as the pole. The center of the sphere, whose small part we have taken as this concave mirror, is called as the center of curvature, this is pole. And if I draw a line which is passing through C and P, that is center of curvature and pole is called as the principal axis. If I take one ray of light which is traveling parallel to the principal axis and which is very close to the principal axis is actually called as a paraxial ray. If I select those rays which are very far from the principal axis, they are marginal rays. So, now one ray which is parallel to the principal axis is falling at point M on the mirror. Then after that it gets reflected. But to show that at this point of incidence M, I will be drawing one normal. So, this normal it passes through the center of curvature. Now, here this angle is angle of incidence as angle of incidence is equal to angle of reflection. After reflection at this point M, this ray of light passes through a point lying on the principal axis. This point is called as the principal focus. Usually, this principal focus lies between C and P. That means, F is the midpoint of C and P. This is the first rule 
or the formation of image by a concave mirror. If I take the second one, if a ray is passing through the focus directly, then after reflection it emerges or it gets reflected the parallel to the principal axis. This is the rule number 2. The third rule is if a ray of light is passing through this center of curvature and after falling at a point on the mirror it gets reflected back that means it retraces the same path. This is the third rule. But to show the formation of image due to this concave mirror at least two rays you require. Suppose I take one concave mirror, this side is highly polished, the other side is silvered, this is the pole, this is center of curvature. If the object is placed between P and C, this object is linear object, it is very thin. One ray of light which is parallel to the principal axis gets incident at point M. After this, it gets reflected and it passes through the uh, principal focus. Another ray of light, if we consider which is uh, which is passing through uh, this uh, focus, which is passing through the focus. After that, it gets reflected and parallel to the principal axis uh, in this way. So, these two reflected rays, they are meeting at this point. So, at this point, you get the real and inverted image. Similarly, if the object is placed between center of curvature and the pole, then uh, uh, not between center of curvature and pole, but between the principal focus and the pole, here if I place the object, then let us see which type of image will be formed. One ray of light uh, parallel to the principal axis after reflected from this surface of the mirror it is uh, passing through the focus after reflection. Another ray of light if I take, it is passing through this center of curvature or else I can say that if this ray gets incident in this direction, then it gets reflected in the backward direction. Now these two reflected rays, they are diverging. That means if I extend these two rays in this direction, then they cannot meet. Image will be formed only at that point where these two reflected rays are meeting or appears to come from that point. Therefore, this side formation of image will not take place. If I extend these two ref, uh, reflected rays in the backward direction like this, uh, then it appears that these two reflected rays are coming from this point and at this point we get the image. This type of image is called as a virtual image and these virtual images are always formed behind the mirror. Labeling let us do. This is A, B, A, B represents the object. Here A dash, B dash represents the virtual image. This point is uh, M we can take, point of incidence M we can take okay? and the, this diagram can be used to derive the mirror formula. A mirror formula is that formula which gives us a relation between object distance and image distance along with its focal length. Now what is focal length? Focal length is the distance between the principal focus and the pole of the mirror. It is represented by small f. The distance between the center of curvature and the pole is called as the radius of a curvature. While deriving these formulae, while solving the, uh, while solving the numericals based on the reflection and refraction using mirrors and lenses, we have to follow a Cartesian sign convention, new Cartesian sign convention. According to that, 
all the distances should be measured from the pole of the mirror. Those distances which are measured in the direction of incident light. Uh, conventionally, the direction of incident light is from left to right. So, the distances measured in the direction of incident light, they are taken as positive and those which are opposite to the direction of incident light, they are taken as negative. Similarly, those distances which are measured perpendicularly upward direction with respect to this principal axis, they are taken as positive and those distances which are measured perpendicularly downwards, they are taken as negative. So, this Cartesian sign convention one has to follow. Let me derive the mirror formula now. For this purpose, the diagram shows, the diagram which I have drawn on the board, it shows the formation of real image when the object is placed between C and F. In this diagram, the triangles, triangles A dash, B dash, P and triangle A, B, P, they are similar. Therefore, I can write a P B dash, okay, I will take like this, uh, A dash B dash upon a P B dash equal to A B upon this P B. You can call it as equation number 1. Now, the triangles A dash B dash F and triangle P M F, they are also similar. In these two triangles, I can write A dash B dash upon P M equal to, now in these two triangles A dash B dash F and P M F which are similar triangles, we can write A dash B dash upon P M which is equal to F B dash upon a P F. Since the aperture of the mirror is very small, therefore, P M is approximately equal to A B. Therefore, I can now write the left hand side of this equation as A dash B dash upon A B which is equal to this F B dash, this F B dash can be written as F B dash I want therefore, it is P B dash minus P F divided by P f as it is. Now, I will be using the Cartesian sign convention uh, to substitute these values. So, that I will do in the next step after comparing these two equations. In these two equations, the left hand sides are equal therefore, I can equate the right hand sides. So, from equations 1 and 2, I get here P b dash upon P b, this is equal to P b dash minus P f upon P f. Now, as per sign convention, P b dash, this is the image distance. So, it is minus v divided by this P b, it is the object distance. Therefore, it is minus u. This is equal to a P b dash means it is image distance minus this P f means it is a focal length. Concave mirror has negative focal length. So, minus of this minus becomes plus. So, it is f divided by this P f. So, it is again minus f. Now, on cross multiplying, we will be getting minus v into minus f, we get v f equal to minus u into minus v, we get u v, then minus u plus f, we get minus u f. Now, dividing this equation by u v f on both the sides, we get here v f upon u v f, this is equal to u v upon u v f minus u f upon u v f. So, here 1 by u equal to 1 by v, not 1 by v, it is 1 by f minus 1 by v or 1 by f equal to 1 by v plus 1 by u. So, this relation between the object distance, image distance and the focal length of a mirror is called as the mirror formula. 
This mirror formula is same for both the mirrors concave and convex whether the image formed by them is real or virtual. Students, you can try at home to derive this mirror formula by drawing the diagram showing the formation of virtual image which I have already shown you few minutes back. Now I will explain you about the phenomenon of refraction. When the light travels from medium 1 into the medium 2, then at the point of incidence when the light is falling here, then at this point it will not go in the straight line into the second medium, it will not go like this, but instead it will bend either in this way or the other way. How it travels in the second, how it enters into the second medium depends upon the density of the second medium. For example, if I take the medium 1 as the rarer medium and medium 2 as the denser medium, uh, then when the light travels from rarer medium to denser medium, then this light ray bends towards the normal. That means, if I draw the normal here, like this, if I draw the normal, then this light ray, incident light ray, instead of going straight into the denser medium, it will be bending towards the normal. So, like this, the bending of light ray at the interface which separates a rarer medium uh, with the denser medium is called as the refraction of light. Let us, uh, let us label it x y is called as the refracting surface. This point O is the point of incidence, O n is the normal at the point of incidence, A o is the incident ray, O b is the refracted ray. The angle made by the incident ray with the normal is called as angle of incidence. The angle made by the refracted ray with the normal is called as the angle of refraction. Now, laws of refraction. The first law of refraction says that the incident ray, the refracted ray and the normal, all these lie in the same plane. Uh, that means, this A o, this ray, O b refracted ray and the normal O n all lie in the same plane. The second law of refraction, it says that the sign of angle of incidence to the sign of angle of refraction means the ratio of sin i to sin r is always a constant and this constant is called as the refractive index of that particular medium. Now, this refractive index can be defined in different ways. For example, if the first medium is taken as air, the second medium is